Hey y'all, Organizing Hire, welcome or welcome back. In this video, I'm going to show how I have my folders set up in my email as I'm applying the GTD method. Whether you're new to GTD or you've been using it for a while, I think email management is always something that we can work on. So this video will help give you some ideas that you might be able to use in your email setup. I'm not gonna talk about processing in this video. That's gonna be a different video. This is literally just the setup process for the email. So the first folder, of course, is the inbox. This is your capture tool. The great thing about email is the inbox is automatic. You don't have to set anything up. It's baked into the email. But one thing to note about the inbox is it is not for long-term storage. Think about your inbox the way that you do a mailbox at home. The mail carrier comes, they put things in it. You go to the mailbox, you take things out. And then for each item that's in that box, you decide what to do with it, a bill, maybe you need to file it, and then you take action on those individual things. What you don't do is go and put your mail back into the mailbox. I know some people that use their inbox for storage because they think, oh, I don't wanna lose it. I don't wanna lose anything. You wouldn't do that for paper mail because you have a system for handling paper mail. So what you're doing when you're keeping things in the inbox long-term is you're really not having a system. And so this is an opportunity to have a system so that way you don't have to store things in the inbox and have them get lost with the other things that are going coming in into your inbox. You wanna have clear lines between new inputs and things that have already been processed. David Allen says your inbox should be cleared every 24 to 48 hours. So try to stick to that as much as possible. The next folder I'll talk about is the archive folder. Again, not unlike the inbox, this is something that's baked into pretty much every program. I don't delete things because I generally don't find a reason to delete things. A lot of stuff can just be archived. The other reason why I'm not in the habit of deleting is in some programs like Gmail, for example, things that are deleted after a couple of days are literally gone so you can't get them back. So now we're into folders that you actually need to create. The first folder is the action folder. Things in the action folder have to meet two requirements. Number one, they need to be things that are going to take you more than two minutes to do related to whatever the email is asking you to do. Number two, only put emails in this folder if you need the actual email to do what's being asked in the email. This is really important because if you put every single email that you get that's gonna take you more than two minutes in this folder, this folder becomes very heavy and dense with things to do and kind of becomes a second to-do list, which is not the purpose of this folder. This folder can almost be like a support folder, which I'll talk about a little bit later. If you're finding this helpful so far, please hit the like button below that thumbs up. It's really motivating for me. Sometimes I feel like I'm talking into an abyss of no one. So knowing that folks are out there and enjoying this content is really helpful for me. It also tells YouTube that if you like it, other people will probably like it too. And it really helps to get the word out about my channel as well. The next folder is the waiting for folder. This is any emails that I am waiting for some type of follow-up for someone. I also have a rule set up for this so that automatically things are filtered here anytime I am BCC'd on an email. Some people use CC, I use BCC, and I use conversation view. So that way all of the emails that are connected to that, if it's maybe an email thread, all of those emails are in that folder as well. And then every time I'm doing my review, I will look through this folder and can very quickly get an idea of what I'm still waiting on from people and can follow up with folks if I need to. The next folder is the read review folder. This is gonna be for things that you need to read or review at your leisure. If there are things that are time sensitive, like review this by a certain due date, actually don't put that in the read review folder. I put that in the action folder and then I put a corresponding task associated with that in my task manager. This is for stuff like listservs, newsletters, receipts for things like those Amazon receipts that they email you telling you that you've bought something or an email saying that something was shipped. Yeah, I don't want that stuff in with the rest of my emails. I just want that to be in a separate folder that I can just peruse very quickly and use very little brain energy when I'm doing so. A lot of people I find get so much relief just from having this folder alone because it keeps those things that really aren't important at all 
out of your inbox. I have a different video that I've done where I talk about using rules in Outlook specifically to, and you can, it's like filters and Gmail, so that these things just completely bypass your inbox altogether and just go straight to the read review folder. The next folder is a folder that frankly, I really don't use that much, but I have it because there are times when I need to use it. And that's the incubate folder. The incubate folder is for stuff that I need to make a decision on, but I'm not really ready to make a decision right now. So let's say there's a conference coming up and it's six months from now, and I need to decide if I'm going to attend this conference. I'm not ready to decide right now. I, I might want to, but I don't know what travel's gonna be like. So I put that in the incubate folder. Like I said, I really don't use this very often because stuff like that doesn't come up for me, but it's nice to have that option if things do come up like that. That way you can have that email readily available for you. So the last folder is really a series of folders and the number of folders that you have is really dependent on you. And that's your project support. I've only recently started using these folders and they've been very, very helpful. So I have one folder for each project that I'm working on if it's really email heavy. I don't have a folder for every single project. If I only get one email about a project, I'm probably not gonna keep a folder for that. I'm also in a position where I'm often asked to share every single email that I've sent to person A or person B or any kind of correspondence that I've had with person A or person B. And to have all that information just be in one folder, as opposed to having to look up every single individual email in an archive or something like that, it's just all right there and I could very easily copy and paste it to whatever I need to. So for the project support folders, I label these in a way that makes sense for me, which is usually by topic. You could label it by person if that makes sense for you. I think in my current role, I use these a whole lot more than I did in my previous role. So sometimes it's also dependent on the workload that you have and how you work. So that's my email setup. Is your email setup different or the same? Let me know in the comments below. Thanks for watching.